Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Amen. It is good to be back before you on another Tuesday for another Bible study. All right. So we're going to um, get into our word. But before that, we're going to have a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord, right now. Asking, Lord, that you will move in the midst of this Bible study. That you will give us understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. Oh, God, that you will touch the ears of the hearers. Cause all of us to hear what thus saith the Lord. Give us a heart to receive the word. Mind to be obedient thereunto. That your name might be glorified in and through these vessels. Have your way. We ask that you will touch, heal, and that you will bring forth deliverances. In Jesus' name, as your word go forth. Amen. Amen. Save souls. All right. All right, so we're, we're going to um, another topic on tonight. Our topic for tonight is my brother's keeper, my brother's keeper, my brother's keeper. On last year in about, it was around October, sometime in October, I taught a lesson on, I think it was, Am I my brother's keeper? All right. And of course, the answer to that is yes. The answer is yes. I taught a lesson on that, uh, but I started with my ministerial staff, I believe, um, doing our, our ministerial instruction um, third week of the month in October, or either I started it in September third week in September. Um, so I started with my ministerial class on Am I My Brother's Keeper? And then um, I continued on with our church, Solid Rock Apostolic Faith Church, in which we um, put that into action. We put it into action. We um, kind of divided our church into groups of three. Um, where we demonstrated being our brother's keeper um, and helping our brothers to maintain, um, um, helping them to grow in the Lord. And I believe also as far as praying for the individuals also that we were in groups with. We came together, um, we had to call each other and have conversations um, about various things, you know, kind of be open, transparent with some things. And it was very helpful to many people. Um, actually, I'm thinking about maybe I'll do that again um, sometime very soon, probably before this year is out, uh, because it, it was very successful. It was very successful. Um, and my, my brother's keeper, but today I'm talking about my brother's keeper, but it's basically on the same lines as... Uh, that particular um, lesson, but it's not actually the exact same lesson that we're going to talk about today. Um, for those of you that uh, look at my Facebook page, you know, I'm on there sometimes, but not all the time. Uh, I've even put a disclaimer there before for some people that Facebook me. I'm not that Facebook person that's on Facebook all the time, so I'm not looking at my inbox at all the time. So sometimes you put something in my inbox, that's not the best way to contact me. Facebook is just not the best way to do that. Um, I might not see that for months or something. You put it in my inbox, it's just the truth. Um, I've seen things that maybe been close to a year. Is you know, it's that's not good. I do understand, but um, I do get on there. I do get on there. But I'm not just, you know, looking, 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 looking. You know, some people just spend hours on end um, throughout the entire day. They're just on there, on there, on there, on there. Um, looking at this person's page, that person's page, you know. I go on and sometimes I may go to maybe a couple pages of that. Most of the time, probably just on my own page. And if you're in my feed, then I might see something that you said. And then I'm not even scrolling through the, through the entire feed. So... Um, some of y'all can see that I miss, you know, I probably missed your birthday or something like that. And I'll come back and say, happy belated birthday. Um, cause I didn't actually see it the day that it was. And I apologize for that. But yes, I'm just not attached to Facebook in that manner. It, it takes up a lot of time that I don't have to give to it. Okay. So, but nonetheless, 
uh, I think a few days ago, I put a post on there um, of a young preacher. Um, well, I put a post on there today as well of a young preacher, but this is a young preacher that was 11 years old today. And I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the one prior to of a young preacher. I think he's a pastor. Um, but he was talking about the call of duty, the game, the game, call of duty. And he was also talking about as a part of the game where the guy says, cover me. And I made reference to um, the saints of God. This is exactly what we need. We need people that will cover us, cover us in prayer. All right. Cover us in fasting, um, covering us with encouragement. All right. Somebody that's there to help you make this journey. Okay. Somebody that will bear your burdens when you seem to get weak. The, the body of Christ, we need that. Um, and we should be willing to offer that um, as a part of the body to individuals. Okay. Not saying that you have to be a crutch, you know, stay, because sometimes you have to be a crutch, but crutches are not made to stay there. Okay permanently it's a temporary thing and then you have to help the person learn how to lean and trust in the lord and you remove that crutch okay uh all right so uh for those of you that looked at that post if you didn't look at the post you can go look at the post and again i, I put a disclaimer there um a little late i think i did it today early early this morning um because it's that's probably about i'm gonna say maybe around three this morning if not earlier or whatever um, because I wanted people to know that I wasn't advocating for the game Call of Duty because I know that that game is pretty, you know, you know, I think bloodshed and they got some profanity in it. So I wasn't advocating for the game, but I was advocating for the message that he was talking about. Okay. So do understand that. All right. All right. Advocating for the message that he was talking about. Amen. So. If you haven't looked at it, you go ahead and check that out. Not right now, but check that out, okay, a little bit later on my Facebook page. Um, if you're my friend, you should be able to see that. Okay. And so today, I'm talking about my brother's keeper. My brother's keeper. And I'm going to ask you the question, are you your brother's keeper? You need to, you gotta, you got to ask yourself that question. Am I my brother's keeper? Okay, and don't just say that you are if you're not doing the work of being your brother's keeper. Okay, and if you haven't been being your brother's keeper, there's no better time to start than now. Like now. All right. Uh, so what I did is um, I looked in the book of Genesis. Okay. Uh, this is where we, we kind of derived, um, this, am I my brother's keeper thing here? Uh, this is where it derived from, for me. Okay. Um, and that's in Genesis, the fourth chapter, verse eight through 11. But before we go there, um, let's look at what keeper means. Keeper, to hedge about, guard, to protect. Attend to, observe, save, watch. So if I'm going to be a keeper, then sometimes I have to um, hedge, put a hedge around you for protection. I want to protect you, all right, from the wiles of the enemy. Maybe I have to stand guard, all right? What do you mean by standing guard um, for your brother in prayer? and fasting, all right, that God will build you up, that God will make you strong, that God will tear down um, the things that the adversary has been able to put in your life that was not of God, okay, and those strongholds, and sometimes we have to fast for each other, all right, this is a part of being a keeper, um, attending to you, you may have need of something, then my job is to attend to you, to help you, because I need you to survive, all right? We need each other to survive, whether you want to believe it or not. And the Lord has so joined us together, amen, that no man is an island. So never think that you're going to make it to heaven all by yourself. You're not. 
You're going to need somebody to help you get there. And that's what the enemy has placed in some people's minds to think, well, I don't need anybody. It's me and Jesus, and I'm just going to make it to on my own. But God didn't design it. He didn't design this walk that way. He didn't design it where we're going to just make it to heaven all by ourselves. Okay? I'm not saying that sometimes you won't have a lonely road, just you and Jesus. That's a part at times, but it's, it's not the journey. It's not the whole journey. That's not meant to be that way. Okay? We're supposed to help each other. That is the word of God. Okay? And if we're going to function properly in the body, we are part of the body, but we are not the body by ourselves. Okay? So, um, it's just like, you know, my hand is not going to go where it needs to go to be able to pick up a piece of paper. If I need the piece of paper, if the piece of paper is in, um, is in the other room, then I'm going to need my feet to carry me there to get my hand to the other room. Okay? I can't just say, um, you know... I want my hand to get this piece of paper because guess what? Um, my hand can't stretch that far and neither can my arm. So it has need of my feet. And so I need my feet to get to where I need to go to get that piece of paper. So never think that you don't need another part of the body of Christ to help you get to where God wants you to go. Okay? We are helpers one of another. So we all need help from the pulpit to the door. We all need somebody to help us, all right, in various ways. Not, not, maybe not the same way, but we do need somebody to help us. This is just not the way. The road is not paved with just going on your own. You're gonna have to. The road is paved with having walk it, walking it out with others. Okay, we're gonna help each other get to heaven. We're gonna help each other get to heaven. Help each other overcome. Help each other get the victory over the adversary. We're going to help each other build the kingdom of God. Okay. And so, um, observe is another um, one of the things as we, we need to do as a keeper. Um, keep our eyes open. I'm not saying get into people's business, so don't misconstrue that, because the Bible definitely talks against that, being busybodies in other men's matters. Um, and some people, ooh, they really up in everybody else's business, but we got to not do that. But um, being observant, you know, sometimes our brother or our sisters may be down, and we may need to just give a word of encouragement. All right? Pray for them. You may not know what the situation is, but you know there is a situation. Let's be observant. And sometimes you got to help save them. You got you to gotta save them. You know, sometimes you got to save them. Though. The Bible says, you know, pulling them out of the fire. Okay? Because some people are really on their way to hell. Some of our sisters and brothers are on their way to hell. But if we can get to them in time and um, kind of grab a hold to them, we just might be able to save them. And the Bible says, first of all, save yourself and them that will hear you. That's what it says. Save yourself first now, okay? And then say, and them that will hear you. Everybody's not going to hear you, but there are some people that will hear you. And they may hear only you. So, all right, let's remember that and, and be a keeper of our brother. Um. Again, I talk about observing and being watchful, having a watchful eye, okay? The Bible says watch and pray. You got to watch as well as pray. We can't just pray, but we also got to keep our eyes open, okay? Because there are so many devices of the adversary out here um, that's trying to pull you, me, and all of us down, all right? But... Great is he, as the Bible has declared, that is in us than he that is in the world. But we have to understand we must do this thing together. We fight together against the wiles of the adversary. Okay? We, we got to do this thing together. And the Bible lets us know that um, when we go through our, our trials or tribulation, that we all have to understand that these same things are not just happening to us, but they are also being accomplished in our brethren that are in the world, okay? So you're not just suffering 
all by yourself and nobody else is suffering and nobody suffering as bad as you're suffering. Trust you me, somebody's suffering even worse and have suffered worse than what you're currently going through and what I am currently going through. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why we need to um, testify. We need to tell of where the Lord has brought us from. Now, I'm not saying you got to tell every single thing, okay? I'm not saying that. Um, but sometimes you got to tell people where the Lord brought you from. Sometimes it's just a one-on-one -on -one encounter with an individual. And they're going through something that you have been through. And you can shed some light on it. Okay? You can shed some light because God has already brought you through. Um, God has given you strategies um, and how to get through it. And that might just help that individual get through it. If you would share that with them. You know, I understand what you're going through. You know, I've been through these type of things myself. And I just want to share how God helped me to get through it. You know, sometimes that's, that's necessary to open up and um, to expose your wounds at times. Um, and hopefully by now they're healed, so they're just scars. Um, but even if they're not completely healed and you're being healed, sometimes it's still needful that we share with others um, how God is currently carrying us through because that can truly help somebody, okay? So they'll know they're not by themselves, they're not walking alone, and this, this is not something just crazy that's just happening to them. No, it's not just happening to you. It's happening to other people and has happened to other people before you. Okay, so let's go ahead to the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. Let's go to the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start with the eighth verse. Fourth chapter of the book of Genesis, the eighth verse. Okay, it's verse 8 to 11. And the Bible said, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. All right, he killed him. Cain killed his own brother. Now, the Bible talks to you and I, and it tells us about getting in quarrels with each other. And it tells us to, to be aware or to be careful, lest we be consumed one of another. We don't want to kill each other. We shouldn't want to. All right? So we should be looking for the betterment of each other, trying to help one another become better, not trying to tear each other down, all right? Not trying to destroy each other, but looking for the betterment of our brother. When I speak of brother, I'm talking about sisters in Christ and brothers in Christ, okay? Um, when you all wrap it up, we're all sons of, of the Lord. That's, that's the word, okay? So... We call us brethren in the body of Christ. Brethren in the body of Christ, therefore not talking about your gender. Okay, so this is not a gender thing. All right, this is a spiritual thing. It's not a gender thing. And so we're not supposed to be doing all that back and forth and calling and all of that. And, you know, getting into arguments and having strife and jealousy and envy and all of these things going on amongst us. We're supposed to be seeking for peace. Following peace with all men. Realizing that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, the Bible says. So, we want to follow peace. We want to have peace, especially with the brethren. The body of Christ. We want to make sure that we pursue peace. That is, that is so necessary. That we have peace in the body of Christ. And the adversary tries to get us to fight against each other. Okay? But we have to understand that if we begin to fight against each other, it's like a cancer in the body. That cancer is when your body is actually fighting against itself. And ultimately, it destroys you. 
and takes you out of this world if you don't get a remedy or God doesn't heal you. And that's what happens. You don't want to be a cancer in the body. I don't want to be a cancer in the body of Christ. I don't want to be um, the reason why somebody got destroyed. You shouldn't want to be the reason why somebody got destroyed. Now, of course, we have minds of our own, and really nobody can really destroy you um, unless you allow them to. Okay? But everybody is not strong as others. So you can end up with blood on your hands because you decided to let the devil use you, all right, to go against another part of the body of Christ. And so, therefore... That individual failed or fell from, what they would say, fell from grace. I don't, I can't say that you necessarily fell from grace, but they got out of the will of God and became unsafe. Okay, um, we have to make sure that we're not the cause of those types of things, because we don't want anybody's blood to be on our hands. So you know, my prayer, my prayer to the Lord is this. You know, I know that various. Uh, people are used for for different things. I mean, because if you don't give your heart to God, then um, God may let the adversary use you um, to prove someone, okay? Um, to help someone overcome themselves, overcome their flesh. Um, but that's that's a negative that's a negative way to be in. I wouldn't want to be the person that's being used like that. I wouldn't want to be the vessel of dishonor that God is allowing to be used on the vessel of honor so that they can become more and more like God. No, I want to be an asset in someone's life. All right? I want to be a positive and not a negative. All right? I don't want to be the person that they got to be praying, Lord, give me strength to deal with this person. Lord, help me to overcome. And when they see me, they got to inhale you know don't, don't act like you ain't been there before you know some people when you see them it's like because you gotta get ready so that you can be able to handle handle them because you already know they're coming with the devil and you shouldn't have to feel like that when it comes down to the brothers the brethren in christ when the body of christ is around you when somebody comes and you see them it's like oh my god oh no oh you know, you you should want to you should you should be able to feel comfortable, relaxed, and knowing that love is going to be exhibited. But unfortunately, it's some people that you just know that they are coming with the drama. They are going to come with foolishness, and they coming after you. You already know it, so you gotta get your spirit right so that you can deal with them the right way with the right spirit, even though they're gonna come in, at you in a negative way. And that's a sad shame. But it's just true. And you got to be praying. Lord, give me strength. Give me strength to deal with them. But I, I wouldn't want to be one of those people that somebody got to pray. Lord, give me strength to deal with them. I want them to be happy to see me come. Now, that's the kind of person that I pray to be. All right? Amen. I don't want to be the other kind. I don't want to be that. That's not that's not what I desire from the Lord. And so, um, back to that eighth verse in chapter four. So he's angry. He's angry. Now let me just go back some, okay, to cover some bases, bring you up to spill. Um, perhaps for those who don't know, um, haven't really been in the scripture lately. Um, they both had offered God a sacrifice. God did not accept Cain's sacrifice, but he accepted Abel's sacrifice um, because Abel gave God what he wanted. Cain did not, okay? Cain didn't bring a good sacrifice, so God didn't accept it. If you give God something that he don't want, don't expect him to accept it. He don't have to. Uh, Cain gets angry about the fact that, you know, hey, God didn't accept my sacrifice, and God is like, well, why are you upset? You know, because if you do good, you know, you'll be accepted. It'll be accepted. But if not, you know, send love at the door. All right? And his desire will be unto you. And we see as time goes on, that now he's in the field with his brother, Abel, who God had accepted sacrifice, okay? Um, 
And looking at this, you know, we, we can kind of think that perhaps he was jealous, maybe envious. Um, God accepted yours, he didn't accept mine. Um, but why do you get mad at people when they do right and you do wrong? And so God accepts them and he doesn't accept uh, what you're trying to give, you know? If you decide that you want to be a hypocrite, it's not nobody else's fault when they want to do what's right and they're not going to hypocrite with God and they're going to be upfront and serious and real, okay? If you want to be received, then you should do the same thing that they're doing. I mean, if they're applying what they need to apply to their life, they are working diligently um, to be all that God would have them to be. They are praying, they're reading their word, they're studying the word of God, they're staying before the Lord. Um, they, they're in their Bible classes, they're hearing the word of God, however, whenever they possibly can. All right, they're staying focused, they're killing out their flesh. All right, these things take time to do and they're taking the time out to do it they are focused all right on pleasing the lord they're putting the work in they're putting the time in um so that they can be all that god wants them to be okay it's just like um if you was a, a piano player but if you want to be a better piano player or the best piano player or the best that you could possibly be all right, you may take some lessons or you're going to practice longer than some other people who just don't really care too much about it. They might play, but they ain't into it like that. So they're not going to invest the time. See, that, that's it right there. Investing the time. Everybody don't want to invest the time that they have to, to, to have a better relationship with the Lord. They say they want a better relationship, and they probably do, but it costs something. You're going to have to do something. Okay, you can't just say, Lord, I want a better relationship with you. And then you don't put anything into the relationship. I mean, you're going to have to act like you really want one. Okay, put some things into practice. Draw a nod to him. How are you going to draw a nod to him? By getting into his word. Okay, praying, getting on your knees, setting time aside intentionally. All right, fasting, turning down your plate sometimes because you really want to get closer to the Lord. Now, people that really mean that and really want to do it, they understand that I have to put the effort in. I have to put the time in. It's something that people can put the effort and the time in on their jobs so that they can um, go up the ladder. But when it comes down to God, we, we just slack. A lot of times, and a lot of things, we just, oh, well, haphazardly do it, half do it, don't do it. And this is God's stuff, but for a natural job, we're going to put all we can into it. I mean, we go to college. Come on. Not everybody do. I understand that. But some, they go to college because they know what they want. They know what they want to be. All right? And sometimes they're already on the job, but they know they need um more knowledge of things so that they can get promoted. So they go back to college, they go to school, they go to college, they spend years, they spend their money, their own money sometimes, all right, to pay their way through college, all right, you're doing all of that so that you can take that knowledge to a regular job. But when it comes down to God and his stuff and the work that he has for you to do, you don't put no effort into it. And God is looking at like, okay, well, they put more effort into the natural than they are into the spiritual when the natural things are going to pass away. The Bible says, lay not up treasures for yourself on earth, but lay up your treasures in heaven. That's where your main treasure should be. Now, it, we're not saying don't um, save and things like that, but your treasure, your treasure, all right? Your treasure is where your heart is. Your heart is where your treasure is. That's what the Bible talks about. Okay? So if you put more into the earthly things, that's saying where your heart is. That's just telling the truth. Wherein the Lord said, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of its righteousness. 
And all these things will be added unto you. And a lot of us haven't grasped that, that yet because we're not seeking the kingdom more than we're seeking the natural. We're seeking the natural first and then we come over to the kingdom. We seek the natural so much that we're too tired to do anything in the kingdom. You, 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 sometimes you can't even get volunteers for kingdom work. Oh, I got to work. They work it so hard they can't even do kingdom work. You working for yourself. When you really wasn't put here to work for yourself. And I understand that we have to work so that we can eat and all of that. But guess what? You wouldn't eat if God wasn't making sure that he made supply and made sure that you had a job and made sure you had health and made sure you had strength. All right? So it's God that doeth the work. So he says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. So we have to put the kingdom first. Okay? Kingdom first, kingdom first, kingdom first. Because we don't want to end up being like the rich man, okay, that that said, wow, you know, he was working and working and working and working in his fields, I guess, and got so much and got so plentiful, you know, that he was like, man, I got so much stuff, you know, and looked at his bonds. He was like, man, I'm going to tear down these old bonds and I'm going to build me bigger bonds, okay? We're so busy sometimes building for ourselves, that we ain't got time to build a kingdom. God said, no, I want you to be building my kingdom. But you're so busy building your own kingdom that you don't have no time for the mission, for the works of God to be done. And there's something wrong with that. You know, God is not liking that type of situation. He's not liking that type of situation. So we're going to have to make a switch here. We're going to have to make time for God's business. And sometimes it may mean that you got to cut some of those hours down that you're doing so much overtime, okay? So that you can be available for the king and his business. And that's true. That's true. How can we put so much time and effort into building our own things? And it's just the truth. This is what happens. This is reality. You know, you want something, you put a whole lot of time in it. You put a whole lot of investment in it. You put a whole lot of money in it. Or you're going to show up for this. And you're going to show up for that class. You're going to show up for that. Or you're going to show up for this seminar. Show up for that seminar. You're going to go out of town. You're going to come here. You're going to go there. Or you're going to go hear somebody. But I'm talking about your own personal stuff. Your own personal stuff has replaced the, the things of God sometimes. We, we And then we want God to bless our stuff. And God is like, why should I bless your stuff when you don't even do my stuff? What is going on here? kingdom first he jesus said listen seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of its righteousness and all these things will be added so all of the other things god said i'm going to give you those things i'm going to add these things to you all right i'm not trying to withhold from you i want you to be blessed but we have to remember our real purpose our purpose for being here on earth is not to fulfill our own selves it is to glorify God, not ourselves. Okay? And so, if I'm doing the things that I want to do and building my own things above trying to build the kingdom of God and investing in things that's the kingdom um, that where I can grow and develop in the kingdom, then God is looking at me like, well, who is God? You or me? Because you're doing more for you than you're doing for me. You're more available to yourself for your own stuff than you are for me and my stuff. So we got to be very careful about that. Very careful. And so uh, you have Cain that's giving God what God doesn't want. You know, what What you got, a minute for God? And God said, I want an hour. You said, I got 15 minutes. That's all I got. But God said, I want an hour. That's why some of us cannot uh, receive from God what we say we want. Because God requires time. That's one thing about God. He requires time. And guess what? God is not in a hurry. If you haven't noticed this by now, you will notice. 
I know the world is going real fast, it seems like. I mean, they got boom, 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 boom. I mean, they got this going, and they got that, and then they're not. That, and 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 that, that. That's the world system. I mean, they going so fast that, I mean, it will make your head spin. They make one thing, and before you know it, they have made a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. And they just keep going, 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 going. And it's just so fast. Like, man, I just got that. Here's a new one already. You know? I just bought a new phone, like, last year. I go back to the store. I'm trying to get a, um, a screen protector. The, the gentleman is like, we don't sell those anymore. You're going to have to go online to get it. I'm like, what? Are you serious? He's like, yes, because we got this now. Okay, so now your little thing has almost become obsolete. It seems like, okay, but you just got it though. But now, yes, well, we got this now. You know, you can't allow the world to push you with its mold. Because my thing is this, my phone works. I just got this phone. I don't need another phone. Just because you got another little trinket on there. Okay, because really phones are meant to be talked on. But I know they done made them into computers and it's a good thing. It's not all bad. It's a smartphone. Okay, so you got a computer in your hand. That's a wonderful, lovely thing. Okay, but some things that I don't even need, I don't need it, so I don't have to pay for that. Because you want me to pay a more expensive price, more than likely, for the next new thing. These phones are expensive. Like, not they are not cheap. They are expensive. And they want you to keep on getting it and getting it and getting it. And some people, they run to get the next new thing. I'm like, they can go ahead and get the next new thing. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to tell you the truth. When I had a Galaxy 8, and some of y'all might laugh, I wanted to keep that phone. The only reason I had got rid of that phone is because the phone started acting up. And they make sure these phones start acting up after a while, it seems like, too. The phone started acting up on me, you know, it's like, oh, my gracious. I don't really want to get no new phone. You hear what I'm saying? That phone was paid off. I'm not into running and trying to get every, every new thing. And he still owe money and all this kind of crazy stuff. I like to try to have some money. You know, if I could have some money, I would like to have some money. I, that phone was paid off. <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to try to use some wisdom, but then there are times when you just have to go ahead and you have to do what you have to do. You know, you, you, you do. But the world is going so fast, and that's what I'm saying, but God is not going fast like that, okay? Time is moving, don't get me wrong, and it's moving closer to certain things. And some things, yes, God is trying to speed us up. Some things God is trying to speed us up because we behind, okay? Uh, but God is not like, ooh, you know, I got to hurry up and get this done. God is like, okay, I got time. I got time in my hands, you know? I have specific time for certain things to take place. When we're trying to speed something up and God is like, I'm not in a hurry. You know, some people want to be um, perfected overnight. That's not happening. You can't be perfected overnight. That's almost like an impossible thing. You know, you got saved today and you're perfected tomorrow. No, you, you have to learn. Jesus said, take my yoke upon me. Uh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You got to learn of the Lord. You got to learn of the Lord. You learn how to walk with the Lord. All right? This is a journey. It, this is a journey. And as some people would say, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Okay? A marathon. So you can take your time and don't be trying to run real fast because you run real fast. You're going to be worn out. And then after a while, you probably fall by the wayside because you was trying to get somewhere so fast before the time. And the enemy that got a hold of you, you know, because you can only handle but so much. And God already knows that. And that's why he don't throw everything on you all at once. Because you wouldn't be able to handle that. So he takes us bit by bit, piece by piece. All right. Okay, let's work on this. You get good at that. Amen. That's great. Let's work on this. All right, let's go a little bit higher. Let's go be a little bit higher. 
And then he's like, okay, well, let's go deeper with that, okay? You got it on that level, but I want to take you deeper, okay? Because you, you're not deep enough. You're not deep enough. Sometimes it's love, okay? You're not deep enough in the love thing. You know, oh, I'm treating everybody right. I'm treating them good. Okay, all right, that's good. You treating people good to treat you good, that's that's good. You know, you being nice and kind and all that, that's good. But I need to work on the part when somebody's just treating you mean, nasty. I want to see how good you can still treat them. Now I'm going to go deeper with the love. You understand what I'm saying? I want to see you forgive, okay, on a different level. Now I want to go deeper with the love. See, God takes us layer by layer, piece by piece, okay? He knows where each one of us are. So he's not trying to hurry up and just make you be all things at one time. But at the same time, don't try to, how can I put it? I'm trying to think how to put this. Don't stretch it. Let me say that. Don't stretch it. What I mean by don't stretch it? Don't try to stretch your time, okay? Because if God said that you should be there by 1 o'clock, but you try to stretch it to 2, I don't know if you're going to make it, okay? So don't be trying to stretch the time. God has the time. You need to be working with God. As he's working with you, you need to be working with God. When God show you a thing, you need to jump on it. You need to start working on it, all right? Because it's time to work on it. That's why he's showing you. That's why he's revealing it to you. Get the work. Get the work. Okay? So Cain has not given God what he wants. God is not happy with it. Cain gets an attitude. And we see here now him and his brother is in the field. He's angry for whatever reason with his brother. And he kills his brother. Literally kills him. Okay? Now after he kills his brother, we're going to read on. And the Lord said, I'm going to go back to 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. So he lied. Am I my brother's keeper? He lied. I don't know. And then he said, Am I my brother's keeper? To God. Now that kind of sounded like he was getting smart to me. You know, like did he really know who he was talking to? The person with the all seeing eye that knows all things. And when he asks you something, it's not because he doesn't know it. He's trying to get you to confess, okay? And confront whatever it is concerning yourself. Recognize. Focus here. Okay? And he says to God, I don't know where you at. Am I my brother's keeper? There, right there, right there. Am I my brother's keeper? Well, he did a poor job of being his brother's keeper. Because yes, the answer is yes. You were supposed to be your brother's keeper. Because he was your brother. He was your brother. Mm-hmm. You know how sometimes, especially if you're the oldest child, and your parents may say, hey, um, you going to the store. Well, take your brother with you. Take your sister with you. I remember my mother used to do that to me. Oh, that used to just get to me. Oh, my gosh. You know, I would be going somewhere with my friends. Um, we was living on Stricker Street at the time. Some of y'all know Stricker Street. We were living on Stricker Street, and um, it was an ice cream parlor on Baltimore Street. And so me and my friends, we would walk down to the ice cream parlor that was on Baltimore Street. And some of the times when I would want to go down there with my friends, my mother would be like, take your sisters with you. And I'm in my, in my mind, I was like, Oh, man, you know, I didn't want to take them sisters with me, okay? With having taken my sisters with me mean I had to watch over them. I had to be my brother's keeper. I had to make sure that they were safe. I had to protect them, okay? So if it means you got to hold their hand while they go across the street, you have to hold their hands while they go across the street. Okay, you have to do some things that maybe they miss or they don't do. Maybe they don't look both ways, but you need to look both ways for you and them. And then help ex escort them on across the street. Okay, 
you know, when I was younger, of course, you know, I just wanted to be with my friends. I didn't want to have to be bothered, you know, with, with sisters. I didn't want to have to be bothered with sisters. I was older. They were younger. And I'm with my friends that's around my age and things like that. But I still had to do it. Because that's what my mother said. Take them up with you. Okay? And sometimes God is saying the same thing. Take them with you. And you're like, oh, man. Oh, man. Let me get on my nerves. And God's like, nope. You're going to hang right on in there with them. Hang right in there with them. Be there for them. Mm -hmm. Your brother in Christ. You know, your sister in Christ. Be there for them. Hey. Help them. Sometimes you got to call them up. You know, hey, you know, inquire. Have you been praying today? Did you read your word today? And you're like, man, they ought to know how to do this themselves. I mean, you know, and not that they don't know how to do it themselves, but sometimes people need that little extra push. Not that you're going to have to keep doing it forever, but sometimes they need that extra push. And sometimes you might need to be like, hey, let's pray together. You know, call you up. Let's pray together on the phone. Okay. We're going to pray for a certain amount of time on the phone together. If that is what they need to help get them into prayer, reading the scriptures. Okay. You can call somebody up and say, hey, let's, let's get in the Bible. Just, you know, let's just read the scriptures. Let's just um read the scriptures that the pastor taught tonight. You know, let's, let's, let's do that. Oh, let's, let's read some scriptures about love. You understand what I'm saying? Let's read some scriptures. Get in the word of God. Um, let's do some challenge, some challenges, um, memory scriptures and things like that. You know, have fun with the word of God. There are things that you can do to help inspire um, your brothers and sisters in Christ. And it don't have to be dull. It can be fun. You call out scriptures. I remember when I was young and a teenager, um, and I had a best friend, she was in the church. And these are the type of things that we used to do. You call out a scripture, see who can get you the scripture first. Read the scripture. All right? These things help you grow and develop. Okay? Learn your Bible. These are the types of things. Sometimes it's the small things that end up being bigger things. All right? And very helpful to you as you begin to grow in the body. Okay, so we can come up with some things to help each other. Being our brother's keeper, encouraging each other. You can make it. I know it's hard. I, I can't tell you it's not going to be hard because I may be lying to you if I told you that. But what I'm telling you is that the Lord is going to take you through and I'm going to be praying for and with you. Being our brother's keeper. Now he has slayed his brother. We got to make sure we're not killing each other and that we're not having jealousy and hatred and envy and then um, responding in that jealousy, envy, and, and hatred. Uh, all of these types of things that we're not supposed to have concerning our brother and in Christ because the devil will use these things. Okay, listen, if we're going to do the job for him, we're making his job much easier because he, he wants to destroy. He comes to rob, steal, kill, and to destroy. But if we are going to attack the body ourselves, then he can kind of stand back and like look at us and laugh. Like, mm, they don't make no sense. They don't know they're killing themselves. And sometimes, sometimes people have jealousy and envy and strife against the very people that God is trying to use to help them. Now, and if you kill, I, I've said this, I don't know how many times, but if God was to really allow you to kill the person that was trying to help you, that would mean you wouldn't get help. I hope you know that. You wouldn't get help because this is the person he has for to, has here to help you. If Joseph's brothers would have actually killed him, the person that God was trying to get to a certain place so that their lives could be spared, then they would have died. Their lives would not have been spared. You understand what I'm saying? But God would not allow it to be so, even though they tried. They tried. They wanted to do it, but God did not allow it to do be done. He blocked it. Okay? He blocked it. I'm going to tell you, if somebody's walking with God and they, they really want to do the will of God, I don't care what you do, 
it's not going to work. It's absolutely not going to work. All right? It doesn't mean that you won't hurt them, but they're always going to survive and become better and better. So really, you're hurting yourself by trying to hurt them. So you, you should understand that. Okay? So Cain has killed him. God is saying, where is he? He said, I don't know where yet. Am I my brother's keeper? And then God goes on and says, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. See, when you hurt a child of God, he is watching. Remember the Lord said, whatsoever you do to the least of these little ones, you have done it unto me. So if we hurt one another, we're not just hurting each other, we're hurting God. That's what we have to see. We gotta keep that in the forefront of our mind. If I hurt you, then I'm hurting God. So I should never intentionally hurt you. Now we do hurt each other sometimes by mistake, but intentional, oh, you got you you got something coming. Okay? Because whatsoever man saw, if that shall he also reap. We gotta remember that. And it don't, it's not just talking to unsaved people. Oh, you're talking about the unsaved people. Touch my mind, not to do my prophet no harm. Oh, you're talking about them. Well, you know, he's also talking about people that's supposed to be saved that doing things to the people that's saved. Okay? We're not getting away either because they still is anointed. And they still is prophets. And you're touching them. You're doing things that you shouldn't be doing toward them. And God is going to get you for doing it with your Hakama Shundering self. He don't care about that. Okay? That's why we got to be very careful about it. It doesn't matter whether it's your mother, whether it's your father, whether it's your sister, whether it's your brother, whether it's your husband, whether it's your wife. All right? All that's in the body of Christ. Listen, and even people that's not inside the body. Okay? Because we got to do right to everybody. But especially the household of faith. We got to do right to everybody though. Okay? So we have to understand that. But when you do stuff to people that's in the body, you cannot expect God not to exact vengeance upon you. Because when they hold their peace, God will fight that battle. And he don't care who it's against. He is going to fight that battle. Because that's his word. Remember, we are children of God first. So that's what I'm saying. Even when it comes down to your family. You got to be careful how you treat your family. You can't just be like, oh, that's my, that's my son. That's my daughter. You know, that's my mother. That's my father. They know me. And just treat them any old kind of way. And go about your business. You know, you don't apologize and all that kind of crazy stuff. Because we family. Let me tell you something. That's not how God looking at it. All right? God don't look at that like that. Because they're part of his body first. Before you want to say they family, they're part of his body first. That's what he's looking at. This is a part of my body. So if you do my body wrong, then I'm getting offended. That's what God said. I'm getting offended. Now I'm going to tell them, you know, all right, I don't want you to try to avenge yourself. But you give place unto wrath. And of course we don't want God to do nothing to our family. So that's why, you know, we be praying. A lot of us be praying about different stuff, you know, because things happen in the family and you be like, oh my God, please have mercy upon this person. Because, you know, you really love them. You're like, Lord, have mercy. Please have mercy on this person. I know I do it, you know, because I want them to have mercy because I know the word. The word is true. The word is going to fulfill. And you just be thinking like, oh my God. Like, sometimes people not thinking. Are they not thinking? Or they just thinking because, you know, you're a part of their family that they can do what they're doing and nothing's going to happen to them. It really is. Okay? So, but we don't want those things to happen. Okay? So, we pray for mercy and grace. That's what we need to do. That's what we should always do. All right? But don't just do it for your family. Do it for other people as well. Okay? But God is, God is not taking, taking a liking to the situation. Your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Okay? So, you're not hiding anything. I know what you did. I know where you at. So I don't know whether he took the man and tried to hide him. Seems to me maybe he did that. He might have took him and maybe buried him in the field or something. I don't know. Because why was God asking, where is he? And then he was saying, I don't know where he is. Okay. And 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 am I my brother's keeper kind of stuff. And God is like, your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground, man. So when we think we can get away with stuff, doing things to our brethren 
And God don't see it. No, God see everything. He hears it and he sees it. He hears it. He hears it and he sees it. He knows if I talk mean and nasty to you. All right? And if I talk mean and nasty to you, I need to come back and I need to get that straight and apologize for talking mean and nasty to you. I can't just leave that because, oh, that's my sister, that's my brother, that's my friend, so they got me. No. No, you need to go back and apologize because, um, trust me, they felt it. They felt it. Okay? More than likely, they felt it. And you, you can be hurting people's feelings and stuff, and that's not right to do. That's, that's not of God. Even if it's your children. You know, if you if you are responding wrongfully now to your children, you need to go back and, and own up to that. Like, I, you know, I shouldn't have hollered at you. I'm sorry. You know, I should have said that like that to you. I apologize. I'm sorry. You know, I, I've done that, you know, as my kids have been growing up. Now, some I know some older parents, they wouldn't, they wouldn't apologize to you. You just a child, and this is what it is. Uh, but that's not the way of God. I'm going to tell you that now. That's not the way of God, okay? Because even children, all right, need to be treated right. And you can't be like, oh, that's my child. I'll do what I want to do. Say what I want to say. How I want to say it. Blah, 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 blah. No, you got the child from the Lord. Okay? So all souls belong to the Lord. And you don't have a right to injure a child. Okay, verbally, you don't have a right to injure a child. And you don't, physically, you don't have a right to injure a child. And what I mean by to abuse a child. You don't have a right to abuse a child. Abuse is wrong. Abuse is sin. Okay? I don't care what your parents did to you. That's Abuse is not of God. Now, the Bible does say beat them. Yes, you're supposed to beat them. You're supposed to correct them. But you're not supposed to abuse them. You're not supposed to be breaking them up. Bust the skin, you all this kind of beat them. Get about whatever, you know. Not whatever. Because somebody people might be like, whatever. You just using all kinds of stuff. No, that's not right. I know back in the day some parents was using central cords and all that stuff. That stuff was abuse. Alright? Beating the blood out of people. You you abusing these that is not of God. You know, putting big webs on people with a stench cord. That's not of God. Now, given, you know, if somebody hits you with a belt, you may whip up some. Okay? That may happen. It just, just might happen. Um, that's what the belt, the bottom, the bottom is the best place for the beat. Okay? And sometimes, you know, you open your hand, smack your hand, whatever the case may be. You understand? But come on. You ain't supposed to go so far with this. With this. Okay? And chastising our kids. So we need to make sure that we're not doing this, those types of things because God is not pleased with that. He's just not pleased with that kind of stuff. Okay? And too much of these things have gone on. And God is not pleased with it. And just because your parent did it to you, don't make it right for you to do it to yours. Okay? So we got to be careful with all of those types of things because we want to please God. Because we're going to stand accountable for God, to God for these things. I'm telling you the truth. You ain't going to be able to stand before God talking about that was my child. Because God going to be like, no, excuse me, I created that child. I created that child. All right? And so, it doesn't matter who it is. All right? Even with husbands and wives. You still got to treat each other right. You can't say, that's, that's my husband, so I'm treating him like this. And he got me. He knows. That's my wife, so I'm treat her like this. And she knows. She understands. You know, I just didn't feel good today, so I'm just taking it out on her. You know? That, you can't do that. You can't do that. Okay? That kind of stuff is just not of God. I mean, how are we going to treat everybody else right and then treat... The ones that are supposed to be closer to us, the closest to us, the worst. That's not of God. All right? And so he didn't kill them. God is pulling them on the carpet, saying, Your brother's blood is crying out to me um, from the earth, which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from, the, from thy hand. Okay? You did the injury. The earth opens his mouth. To receive your brother's blood from your hand. How much blood have we shed it? Let's think about that. How many people's blood have we shed it? And I'm not talking about in the natural. Because you probably didn't shed their blood in the natural. Like no blood came out of them in that way. 
But how much injury, how much injuring have we done to one another? That's in the body. Where the person had to go home or wherever and they had to cry tears and ask God to help them and give them strength because they was injured by another part of the body. Jesus said, I received my wounds in the household of my friends. And it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. Nobody should have to go home or, or you, you know, and, and tears and crying. Like, you know, they treating me wrong and they don't love me. They, and to be true, I'm talking about and to be true. Okay? And injured and, and, and bleeding. Bleeding heart. And going into depression and all of these types of things because someone in the body is injuring them and not being their brother's keeper. Because if I'm my brother's keeper, I want to protect you from harm. And if you know not, you're not going to protect the person from harm and you want to be their, your brother's keeper, then maybe you need to back off because you know that you're injurious and perhaps you got some issues. All right? And you're not, you're, you're not good for them. Amen. Maybe you need to move yourself out of the picture some. Before you help destroy them and bring them to destruction. My brother's keeper. You gotta keep that. All these things we need to keep in our mind. We need to rehearse. We need to go back over the word of God. I hope that you go back over this. Okay, don't just listen to it tonight. Go back and listen to it over and over again until it just really resonates in your spirit, in your inner man. All right, think on the words that the Lord is speaking unto you personally. We got to take this personal, okay? You got to take it personal. So, the, the earth had received this from his hands. Um, he, he killed his brother. And, of course, if you go further down in Scripture, you'll see his punishment um, for doing that. Okay, he doesn't escape. You won't escape um, God's punishment if you injure um, a brother or sister in the body of Christ. You're not going to escape punishment. You will be punished. And I'm just going to tell you the truth, okay? It's just like um, a parent would do to a child. You know, I remember an incident between um, my kids and um, they were in the basement. And so one scratched the other. Like right under the eye. One of them scratched the other under the eye. And so, you know, they came upstairs and I think they were crying. And one of the one that was scratched. They were crying and I'm like, when I seen what the other one had done, I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You better know. I whipped behind. You understand? Because you don't do this to your family member. You don't do that. Well, really you shouldn't do it to nobody. But you don't do that. This is not what you do. So I'm going to beat you behind for doing this to them. And God is the same way. Okay? Because we're, we're his children. So if I do something to you that I'm not supposed to do, I, I don't get to get away with that. Even as a pastor. See, we can never think that um, we are beyond above the laws of God and rules and regulations. And I can just do what I want to do because I'm the leader and I can just say it how I want to say it. And I can just hurt who I want to hurt. And, you know, no, you cannot. As a matter of fact, you're going to get it worse. You're going to get it worse. Because you should definitely know better. You know, I'm talking about you deliberately doing stuff to hurt people. You are going to get it. Now, given we hurt people, all of us, basically, we hurt people, but not intentionally. And if you're intentionally, because some things people get hurt over, and I mean, they, 
That's just because they want to have their way. You get hurt about that because I don't agree with you. That's something different. But if I'm trying to injure you, I'm deliberately trying to injure you and hurt you, and I know what's going on, what I'm doing. Oh, come on now. God's definitely going to get you for that. He would get me. He would get me for that. Okay? He wouldn't just get you, but he's going to get me too. I, if you did something wrong, that's what I'm talking about. If you did something wrong to another saint, he's going to get you. But if I do something wrong to a saint, he's going to get me. Or anybody. Okay? You can't willfully just do stuff to people and expect God not to get you for that. Okay? Just like I beat the one child because they injured the other child. Well, that's the same thing with the Lord. You are a brother's keeper. I'm my brother's keeper. I'm not put here to destroy my brother or to hurt my brother. I'm here to help you. And I got to keep that in mind. Even when the enemy is making you do stuff that would make me not want to help you. See, that's how the devil works. The very person that God wants you to help, the devil, if the person is not careful, will use them to do stuff and act certain ways toward you that will make you think twice like, hey, I don't feel like dealing with this. I don't even want to help them now. I'm trying to tell you the truth, just being real. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You could have good stuff in your mind like, oh yeah, I want to do this tonight. And then they start acting crazy and you be like, you know what? And then you got to let the Holy Ghost work. Because you know you'd have been a stop. I ain't got time for you. I'm not going to help you. Later for you. Adios. Arriva Dirty. See you later. Whatever word. Sayonara. Okay. I'm done. I'm gone. It's it. It's over. I'm not going to try to help you because you don't seem like you want to be helped. And the devil will have people doing all of that kind of stuff. You fighting the person that's trying to help you. You need to stop doing that, okay? If somebody's trying to help you and God is using them to help you, stop fighting that person. Because let me tell you something. They have got to, they've got to tough it through to help you to do what God is telling them to do. But when God say enough is enough, they get to back off and leave you alone. And leave you to your own devices. And don't think God will not say enough is enough. Because he will. If you keep doing what you're doing. After a while. God will tell them. Okay. You can, you can stop. You can stop. And then what is going to happen? So come on now. Let's, let's work with the people that's trying to help us. And not against with them. Let's work with them. Not against them. Okay? They trying to help you. They looking out for your good. They trying to be their brother's keeper. But if you keep showing you don't want to be kept, you don't want to be kept, you don't want to be kept, you don't want to be kept. Then after a while, they just got to relinquish you over into the hands of the Lord. Him alone. And that even happens, you know, when you're when you're a pastor sometimes. Sometimes, you know, God wants you to labor with people and labor with people. All right? And work with them and work with them and work with them. But there comes a time when God is like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't want you to keep doing that. You give them over to the Lord. And there comes a time when you just can't go no further or something. You feel like, Lord, I, you know, I can't do this. And it's, hey, the Bible says to grieve not. You're not supposed to grieve your pastor. You're not supposed to grieve the person that's over top of you. For they are as those that must give an account for you. And the Bible said that that would not be good for you. Okay, it's not going to be good. And they got to talk to the Lord concerning you. You done gave them a fit. Okay? You half driving them crazy. You stressing them out almost. It's not going to be, it is not going to be profitable for you. And you don't want to have to get people over to the Lord, but sometimes you have to. You have to be like, Lord, I got to put... I'm going to have to just put them into your hands because there's nothing else I can do with them. They ain't trying to listen to me. 
And that's the other alternative. When you keep doing things and you don't listen to leadership, after a while, leadership has to put you in the hands of God. And I'm going to tell you, once you get in the hands of God, it's going to be rougher. You're going to have a rough ride. More than likely. Probably nine times out of ten. And probably maybe 99.9. .9, I'm trying to tell you. So you, you, you'd be better off to listen to the leader. While God's trying to help you make it easier on you. You don't want God to have to step in and 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 do the job. He can, he can do the job now. But um it's not gonna be nice. I'm just telling the truth. Okay? And so that's that's where um Cain ended up, the situation um that he ended up in because he killed his brother. And he asked the question, am I my brother's keeper? But the answer really was yes, you, you should have been. You should have been. But instead of keeping him and protecting him, you are the one that harmed him. We shouldn't want God to be able to say that about us. Instead of you keeping your brother and protecting your brother, you harmed them. You killed them. You injured them. You helped destroy them. Got to be careful of it. We got to be so careful. All right, I'm moving on. The book of St. John, the 15th chapter. St. John, the 15th chapter, verse 12. This is Jesus talking. He said, this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. My commandment is that you love one another as I have loved you. I want you to be your brother's keeper. I want you to be your brother's keeper. Go to 1 John. 1 John, the fourth chapter. 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse 20. It says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. So he said, you can't say you love God and don't love your brother, okay? Let's think about that. How are you going to tell God you love him and you don't love a part of his body? We are a part of the body of Christ. So if you don't love me, then you don't love him. Then that's how God, that's how God take it, okay? And the same thing with you. If I don't love you, I don't love God because you are a part of him. Amen. That's just a word. I'm just telling you what the Lord said. So we got to love one another as the Lord has loved us. Okay, so how did Jesus love uh, his disciples? Because he's talking to his disciples. How did he love his disciples? One of the ways he loved his disciples is he stood in their defense. Okay, we got to stand up for our sisters and our brothers. Okay, sometimes people may come to you about uh, another part of the body of Christ and you don't just dive in there with them, you know? And I got to say, this, this is one of the things that make some people upset with me when they bring things to me is that I try to get them to see it uh, from another point of view. Okay, well, maybe they didn't mean it like that. Um, maybe it was this. Blase, blase, blase. You know, I'm, I'm trying to like stand in their defense. I'm, 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 I'm trying to look on a, a, a better side of what it could have been, opposed to what you're thinking it was. I'm not saying that what you think is inaccurate. I don't know, but perhaps, perhaps let's just, just let's just think about it. That maybe it wasn't what you perceived it to be. And I've gotten in trouble behind things like that. You know, and what happened, you know, the person ended up getting mad at me. You know, I've had it where both individuals got mad at me because I did the same thing with both the individuals. And they, you know, both of them got on me. Well, you taking this person's side or you more for that person than you are, you know, and you you this and you that, you know. they So they start judging me, which is not the truth. I'm just trying to have peace between the two of you, trying to get it straightened out. And I want you two of you to love each other. All right, and I'm trying to bring this thing together the way it should be. Uh, but now both of y'all attacking me. Sometimes you get attacked from doing that. Okay? 
Amen. But it is what it is. It hasn't stopped me because I'm going to keep on doing things like that because I got to try to save my brother. You understand? And if you my brother and you you against this brother, then when you bring it to me, I'm trying to save this brother. Okay? In your eyesight. I'm trying to save this brother. I'm trying to save this brother. Okay? Because I know we have to love each other. And I try to get you to understand that too. We have to love each other. Okay? Well, maybe they're weak. I may say that. Well, perhaps they're weak. Okay? You need to be praying for them. You got to pray for them. Now, of course, sometimes you got to go to the person and things like that. All right. And I mentioned that as well. Uh, but I'm going to put the onus on you too here. Okay. You, that's what's going on. That's what they're doing. Okay. Well, your job is to be praying for the brother or the sister. They're part of the body of Christ. Okay. And the devil is using them. You see the devil using them. You, we don't want the devil to get victory over our sister or over our brother. Come on, we got to try to pray them out of this. We got to pray on this thing. That God will test their heart and test their minds. Instead of getting in cahoots. I know you right. This They just terrible. They just ungodly as ungodly can get. Come on now. You know, let's, let's pray. Sometimes you are right about the situation. But what are we going to do about it? They need some help. You know, they need some help. They need some deliverance. Let's pray that God help them. Let's pray that God delivers them. You understand? Now, I do understand that sometimes people need to vent. Okay? Make sure you vent to the right person. And make sure your motives are right. You got to make sure your motives are right, too. You don't want to have a motive that you're trying to kill somebody. All right? You're trying to kill somebody. You know, that's the wrong motive. Okay? So, you got to be careful with that as well. All right, I'm not just saying be locked up in a bubble and hold all things in and, you know, just hold it in and, and let it do stuff in the inside of you and you don't know what to do with it and next thing you know, you just all out of source, all out of whack and, you know, maybe having a nervous breakdown and, you know, we don't know what's going on with you because you wasn't able to get it out, Okay. Sometimes you need to be able to talk to somebody, but not everybody, not anybody. You got to talk to the right type of people, okay? All right? Talk to people that's not going to hate the person. All right? But they're going to love the person and be praying for the person, okay? And you. And that will minister to you as far as the individual is concerned as well. Um, If you need help so that you don't harbor things in your spirit and in your heart. All right? So a lot of times it's not your friend, especially if you're young. They, they, a lot of times they're not the ones to go to. Okay? All right? That's why you got ministers and things like that. You got your pastor. You got ministers. All right? You got people that's in God um, that can help you tunnel through uh, various things in life. Because we got to be careful um, in being our brother's keeper. Okay, I'm going on to the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 1 to 11. Um... I'm just really going to kind of do a brief synopsis of this, I guess you could say. Here, when we look at this, is um, the disciples had gone and, you know, they were eating. And they had not washed their hands. Uh, the Pharisees see this. And now they're going to question Jesus concerning that. Because, you know, they believe that you should wash your hands. And now that's a good thing to do. That's hygiene. Okay? But it's not a sin if you don't wash your hands before you eat. But please do. Do that, okay, because that's germs. Um, and they was like, you know, why is it that your disciples um, are disobeying the traditions, basically, um, of the elders? Because they don't wash their hands before they eat. And Jesus was like, well, why are you disobeying the commandments of God <laughs> with your traditions? <laughs> by, your, by your traditions, which was true. You know, stuff that God said do, they had traditions to tell people it's okay if you do that because... Um, for this reason. So they was overstepping God's word 
putting their little stuff in there to okay things for people that God had not given them the liberty to do. All right? So when they came to Jesus about his disciples, he would stand up for them. He was standing up in their defense concerning this situation. All right? I'm going to Luke, the fifth chapter. Luke, the fifth chapter. All right, Luke, the fifth chapter, verse 33 to 35. Luke, the fifth chapter, verse 33 to 35. Okay, so here they come again, and they're asking Jesus about his disciples, okay? Like, how come your disciples don't fast? Our disciples fast, John disciples fast, why yours don't fast? And Jesus, again, is standing in their defense and letting them know they don't need to fast. Because I'm here. You know? You know? you They can't fast at this time. It's not appropriate for them to fast at this time. And then he says here, um... Give me a second. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink. And he said unto them, Can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the day will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Okay? They don't need to do it right now. So he's standing in their defense again. Okay? Luke, the 22nd chapter. Luke, the 22nd chapter and verse 50. Uh -huh. Give me a second. Luke, the 22nd chapter. No, that's not it. Give me a second. Hmm. Okay, it's not Luke the 22nd chapter. Doesn't look like it. Yes. Okay, yes it is. Luke the 22nd chapter and verse 50. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Verse 21, 51. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far? And he touched his ear and healed him. Now, how is Jesus' brother's keeper at this point? Okay? Now, it was Peter that cut off the high priest's servant's ear. Okay? In the Garden of Gethsemane. He cuts his ear off. But Jesus, when you look at this, it's like Jesus protects Peter because he now heals the man that Jesus cut his ear off. Okay? Now, Where's the evidence that your ear was cut, off, was cut off today? You don't have the evidence that your ear was cut off today because your ear is healed. So he yet seeming to be protecting Peter because with him cutting off this um, high priest servant's ear, you know they should have came after him. You know they should have been coming after Peter. But when you're your brother's keeper, you protect your brother. You protect your brother. Uh, Matthew's the fifth chapter. Matthew's the fifth chapter. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Matthew's the fifth chapter, verse 23 and 24. Therefore, if thou, therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remembers that thy brother have ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Okay, so if you come to the altar, and you get ready to pray, whatever, um, the Lord said, mm-mm, stop right there. Okay, if you know that your brother have an art against you, if you've offended your brother or they think you did something to offend them, first, go to your brother, okay? Get reconciled with your brother, okay? Get things straight. Come, come, you know, get the unity back. Then come and offer up your gift to me, okay? God is serious about this brother thing, okay? All right? I, I shouldn't want to leave you and... Uh, in the wrong state of mind and God knows if I've done something wrong to you then I should definitely want to repair that and get that fixed okay uh, Matthew's the 18th chapter eighteenth chapter verse 15 to 17. It's the other way around. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Amen. So, it's in the reverse this time. First, if you had done something to your brother, he had an art against you, he tells you to go to your brother. Okay? Now, it is, the brother has done something to you, okay? But you still need to get it straight because we're brothers in Christ. Okay? Um, and Apparently, you're offended. Um, if you're offended, you need to go to the brother. Let them know the wrong that they did to you. If they repent, good, you want your brother. But if they don't repent, then the Bible tells you to, uh, uh, the different actions to take, okay? You go step by step. You got to take these actions. Now, if they keep on not wanting to get it straight and you don't know, want to do that, well, you, it's the devil using you. If you don't want to repair the relationship, um, amongst the brethren, okay? How you gonna be of God and you, you you just gonna hold the grudge no matter what? How you gonna be of God and do that? That's, that's not a good thing, okay? That is absolutely not a good thing. Okay? You, we have to be forgiving. Now, when I say forgiving, I am not saying that if someone is toxic, they're a toxic person, all right, and um, they really just messing stuff up. That you got to keep um, receiving injury behind injury behind injury behind injury behind injury. I'm not telling you that, okay? But what I am telling you is that you do have to forgive. The Bible said you got to forgive. Jesus, Peter asked Jesus about that, and he said 70 times 7. Okay, there's a whole lot of times, okay, that the Lord may require that you forget. Okay, so you got to forgive, all right? But forgiving does not always mean that you got to try to maintain that same relationship, okay? Because sometimes a person is just not right. They're not of God. They're not going to be of God. They're not going to do what they're supposed to do. And um, it's kind of detrimental to you, okay, and to your walk with the Lord. So you got to know that. All right, and Mark, the 11th chapter, verse 25 to 26, you can write these things down, um, is where the Lord is talking about um, forgiving. Forgiving. He said, when you come to pray, he said, forgive. And I, I'm going to go to that scripture. He says, forgive. I'm going to go to that scripture. 
That's the 11th chapter. Verse 25, 26. He said, and when you stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Okay, so the first scripture we read on that was that you were supposed to go to your brother. You got to, uh, your brother did you wrong, go to your brother, be reconciled to your brother, okay? But it doesn't let us off. It doesn't let us off the hook. Let's say your brother won't, you know, they, they're not trying to be reconciled, you know, they're not, they're not trying to be a godly person, whatever, okay? So now you got to consider them as a heathen and a publican, and that's the word of God, okay? So they basically a sinner, okay? Because what else are you? You're not of God. You're not of God if you don't want to be reconciled in the body of Christ and you refuse, okay, to have peace amongst your brother. You cannot be of God and be, have that type of spirit. So you being used by the devil. The devil really got a hold of you, okay? So you got to understand that. So that's what the Lord said. Consider them to be as a heathen and as a publican. So you get to, you get to um, be received as that and and recognized as that, an ungodly person, okay, at this point. Um, and being used of the devil, whatever the case may be. Okay, but here he's saying, when you come and start to pray, forgive. So now, it doesn't matter whether the person wanted to do the will of God. It doesn't matter. You still have to forgive. So, you come into God. Okay, Lord, you know, I, because you cannot afford, I cannot afford to let unforgiveness keep me out the kingdom. And I can't afford to let unforgiveness um, get me in a place where God ain't going to forgive me. And you don't want God not to forgive you. You know that. Come on now. So we can't let somebody else stand in our way of being forgiven by God. It's just best to forgive the person and move on. Okay. Then forgive. You, you're not going to try to get vengeance on them. You understand what I'm saying? Because guess what? That's not even your job anyway. That's not your job. I told this to somebody before. You know, it's like, that's not my job to um get vengeance on you. That is not my job to do that. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. He didn't tell me to repay nobody anything. What he told me to do is to forgive. You were about forgiving. God got the rest. You can't afford to be unforgiving. I can't afford to be unforgiving. Because guess what? If I get in a situation, I'm going to need God to forgive me, and I want him to forgive me, and so do you. So that means he, he is expecting us to forgive other people. That way, it frees him up to forgive us. Amen. Amen. But again, let's not misconstrue forgiveness. If you is a thief and you stole my money, I'm required to forgive you. But I am not required to trust you again with my pocketbook. I'm going to take my pocketbook with me. That does not make me not of God, because I take my pocketbook now. I don't trust you. I don't, you are no longer in the same category anymore that you was before. You're not trusted. And I don't have to leave my pocketbook here so you can go in there and steal again. But I forgave you for the fact that you stole. Okay? You deal with God about that. But I'm not giving you another chance, no opportunity to steal it again. No, no, no. Okay? So sometimes people put, their, put themselves in a different category. Because of the things that they've done. And you can't expect somebody to come and trust you. Oh, you should trust me. What? No, trust is earned. Trust is earned. You have to understand that. Trust is earned. So you don't have to go because of, um, you didn't say, oh, I forgave somebody because the devil will run you down and use anything that he possibly can to bring you home. Okay? 
He will use anything about, well, you supposed to forgive somebody, so how come you don't trust them around your pocketbook? Because they're not trustworthy, that's why. They haven't proven themselves to be trustworthy. They're not going to trust them around my pocketbook. That has absolutely nothing to do with me forgiving them. So if somebody comes to you and say, well, uh, well, you don't trust me, so that means you didn't forgive me. That doesn't mean that I didn't forgive you. This just means that I don't trust you. And right now you're in a different car. You're like, I don't trust you. And I have a right to not trust you. But I have forgiven you. I'm not going to seek vengeance on you because you took it. But I have, I, I don't trust you. And I'm going to take my pocketbook. That's just truth. So, you know, the devil make you overdo it or underdo it. That's, you got to be careful with it all, okay? Don't let the devil fool you. All right, so you can get trapped into stuff. That God don't even want you trapped up in. Okay. And so, you got to forgive. You coming from the Lord, you need to forgive people. If you if it comes to your mind, and if you're a person that can forgive them, sometimes it may be necessary to go to them. If you harbor it in your spirit, let me tell you now. If you harbor what they did to you in your spirit, and it's affecting you, and you're carrying it around with you, you need to get that straight. You understand? But sometimes you don't harbor, we don't harbor in our spirit. It happens, you're like, oh, Lord. Okay, well, you can forgive. Some of us are able to just forgive and not have to go through all of that, you know, because we're not allowing an offense to be in our spirit. But if the offense is in your spirit, you definitely need to go and, and um, get that together with that person, okay? You need to get that straight. Because you got to get that stuff out of your spirit. That stuff got to get out. You know? And sometimes God will tell you anyway to um, go to the person because the person needs to be saved. You know? And I know sometimes people are like, well, I don't want to go to them because, you know, they get attitudes and whatever, whatever. But how is it affecting you, though? Okay? You got to think about how it's affecting you because if, it's a, if, it, if it is affecting you, you, you got to get that out of your spirit. They gotta, you gotta get it out. And sometimes we gotta tell our brethren, you know, what you did was wrong. That wasn't right. That wasn't of God. You know, you know, you shouldn't have did that. You shouldn't have treated me like that. And prayerfully, they won't allow the devil to use them. I didn't do nothing to you because you got people like that too. They just refused to accept that they were wrong. I didn't do nothing to you. La, 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 la. And in cases like that, well, you know, okay, well, that's when you go get, you know, get the right type of people. You don't go get all your cut buddies. Get the right type of people, um, unbiased people, um, that will also go to the individual with you and try to resolve that situation, okay? You can't resolve it like that. It says take it to the church. Um, I'll say the next step, you need to bring it to the pastor, okay? And the pastor decides what, how um, they're going to handle it amongst the church, okay? Because they got to use wisdom. got to use wisdom in all things. Okay, um, Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse one through five, um, that particular scripture, and I, I am going to wind it up, but I just want to, I really want to finish this, okay, I can't tell you that I'm always going to stop on a dime, okay, because this is not going to happen all the time, but for the most part, I try to do that. Well, maybe not exactly on the dime, but, you know, close. It's close. Pretty close. All right. He says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, these shall also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Now, first he's saying now, okay, if, if somebody is overtaken in a fault, okay, they, they got out of the will. The spiritual people, the spiritual people are supposed to go and try to help restore this person, get them back to the place that they're supposed to be in the Lord, considering themselves, but they got to do it in a spirit of meekness now. Don't go being high-minded because you didn't do it and nah, ah, you know, I don't even do it. You know, Mr. and Mrs. High-minded, like you never did anything wrong, okay? No, 
You got to go in the spirit of meekness and go with the love of God and try to help the person be restored back to the place in God that they need to be. You got to consider yourself. You should also be tempted. Okay? Think about it. You got to be careful with stuff and with people. And it says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Okay? You, you got to help bear people's burdens. We got we to gotta help one another. Okay, this, such a, this situation is a burdensome situation. What we need to do? Do we need to fast with you? Do we need to pray with you? Um, do we need to talk to you um, more, you know, on a constant basis? Do we need to call you up more and, you know, making sure that you're kind of on point? You know, do we need to go over the word with you some? Um, do we need to pick you up for Bible class or whatever, you know, church? What, what we need to do? Stand by your side. Let you know that we're supporting you. We're helping to bear your burden. Okay? And it just lets us know, if you think, if a man thinks he's something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So if you think you're in a certain place, if, if you're not at that place and you think you're all that or whatever, you're only deceiving your own self. Okay? But, every man, um, but let it, Everybody got to prove their own work. So first he said, bear one another's burdens, okay, and so fulfill the law of Christ. But then it also lets us know, okay, that we got to be able to stand on our own two feet as well, okay? You got to be able to sit there. You have got, at a certain point, you got to be able to stand on your own feet. But let every man prove his own work, okay? Prove what you're doing. And then you shall have rejoicing in yourself alone and not in another. And not in somebody else. Because you know that you're doing what God requires out of you. You can rejoice in that. Not for high-mindedness, but you are grateful that you know that you're doing what is right. Okay? For every man shall bear his own burden. It's okay. You're going you're gonna to have to bear your own burden sometimes. Okay? And that's just the truth. You got to have some endurance for yourself. You got you to gotta understand that you are personally responsible for making sure that you make it to heaven. Okay, I cannot put all that weight on somebody else to make sure that I get to heaven. You can't even put that on your own shepherd because it's your shepherd's job to give you the tools that you need to get to heaven, but it's your job to use them. They can't make you use them. And that's the truth. All right, in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 15, 1 through 5, it talks about... Um, the strong bearing the infirmities of the weak. But if you go to chapter 14, verse 19 through 23, you can write that down. Chapter 14, verse 19 to 23. Okay, they were talking about um, eating and drinking. And, you know, some of the saints didn't believe um, that they should be doing certain things. So they were being offended about this. And, you know, before Paul said, if meat offend my brothers, I, my brother, I will not eat it as long as the world stands. Okay, so then you get to the 15th chapter in verse 1 through 5. He also talks in here and he says, um, we that are strong should bear the infirmities of the weak. Now, when I looked it up, it the infirmities is considered as scruples of consciousness. Um, scruples is a feeling of doubt or hesitation with regard to morality or I'm sorry. Or propriety of a course of action. Hesitate or be reluctant to do something um, that one thinks may be wrong. So in other words, uh, there are people that's hesitant to do certain things because they think that it is morally wrong to do. Okay? Um, some of them thought it was morally wrong to eat certain things. Okay? Drink certain things, whatever the case may be. Um, and so Paul was like the strong, we supposed to bear the infirmities of the weak. So, um, listen, don't wound their conscience by doing things that you know, think that they think is wrong, that they think is a sin. Why would you sit there and eat pork? Let's just use that for instance. And they believe that if you eat pork, you're in sin. So you're going to wound their conscience by you sitting here. Well, I'm going to eat this pork because ain't nothing wrong with this pork. I got to pray with this pork and this pork is okay. But you're wounding the brother's conscience. What's more important? That you eat the pork? 
You don't even need to eat the pork. It's not like that's a necessary thing. And if you're going to eat the pork, don't eat it in front of them because you are injuring them. Okay? Though they may be weak in that area with that. Okay? In their conscience and their understanding of that particular thing. So you need to bear that infirmity. Okay? And and do what is needful so that your brother can be okay. And stop just trying to be self-pleasing. I'm just doing me, man. If I can't even do me. Listen, we got to get rid of all that kind of stuff. That's not what God tells us to do. We have to consider our brethren in Christ. And so, if we know that they really feel like this particular thing is sin or, you know, they're reluctant to do it. Here you go doing it. And they think like, man, I don't, I don't really think it's right, but everybody else is doing it. So I think I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I might do it, but I, I don't really believe I should do it. And if they do it, then they, they feel like they're in sin. And, you know, because if it's not a faith, then it's sin. So come on, which, which is the word. Okay. So now you got them doing stuff that they're not supposed to be doing. Because they don't believe they should be doing it. So if you don't believe you should be doing it. If you think it's a sin you should not do it. Okay. Just to please people. So we got to be careful. About what we do. When we know. That someone. Really believes. That that particular thing is a sin. Even though we know it's not. And I'll go, I'll go further than that. Sometimes um, we know certain things are not a sin, but it, it would be offensive to us. Okay? So when you get into the word, the word talks about, you know, um, talks about drinking. And people bring that up sometimes. And, um, Jesus drank wine. Okay, Jesus did drink wine. Okay, um, Paul did tell Timothy to drink a little wine for your stomach's sake. Okay, but you got to go back in history and see what all what was going on. And, you know, if the water wasn't good, they needed to drink something. And maybe the alcohol was being used as a for medicinal purposes. Okay, got to think about that. Um, the Bible also says that, you know, strong drink is raging. Okay, it tells us about those things. So basically, you should understand, you should think like, oh man, I really shouldn't be drinking that, you know? Especially if you're going to get drunk, because that is that is a sin, okay? Getting drunk is a sin, all right? I can't tell nobody that, you know, that drinking in itself is a sin. I can't tell you that, okay? I don't recommend it at all. Um, and we do have some um, regulations, okay? We don't drink. We don't drink, okay? All right, we have those regulations. Um, and... Um, those that want to be a part of, they agree, okay? And if you make that agreement, all right, then you are bound to that agreement. And God's going to hold you to that agreement. You can't get up there and say, I agree to do these things and then go and not do it and do other stuff because then it becomes a sin, all right? And we need to understand it. But what I'm trying to get at is this, okay, even though um, I personally know Okay, drinking may not be a sin, but you're going to fit me more than likely, okay? Not amongst us. I'm not talking about amongst those that's a part of us, okay? I'm not talking to those that are part of me because it's part of us because you definitely, you, you, that, that's a no-no. Um, but someone else that knows that we, um, we don't do it, um, we don't feel good toward it, for them to come and, and do it in front of us, it's, it would be offensive. So they shouldn't do it. Okay? And it's vice versa. If it's something that we're doing that someone would be offended by, then we shouldn't do it. You understand what I'm saying? Even though we may have liberty to do it. But we shouldn't because this is going to offend them. So we, these are the things that we need to think about. Um, when we're thinking about being our brother's keeper. And sometimes we just want to be selfish and we don't, you know, we don't want to give up nothing. If it's okay, it's okay. It's okay with God. So, you know, I'm going to do it. But what's more important? Your brother? Or are you doing something that you don't need to do? The brother has to be more important. Okay.
Okay. So the last, let me see. The next scripture would be Mark, the ninth chapter, verse 14 through 29. Okay? And this here is Jesus come down from the mountain, mountain of transfiguration. He has Peter and John with him. He gets down to the bottom of the mountain. He sees um, them questioning the disciples and talking with them. And he jumps in and says, what are you questioning them about? Okay? Listen. Jesus was their keeper. Okay? They belonged to him. They were under him. We're talking about grown men, but he loved them, okay? He was their leader. So he comes down and says, what are y'all questioning them about, okay? And then the man, bring, man comes and says, you know, I brought them to my son, and, you know, they couldn't cast out the demon. Jesus was like, bring the child to me, okay? So Jesus casts out the demon, okay? He casts out the demon from the child, and then when they get in the house, the disciples was like, well, how come we couldn't cast them out? Now Jesus goes into teaching mode, and he basically tells them, these kind come of not out but by prayer and fasting. So he's letting them know what they need to do if they're going to cast that type of demon out. Okay, because all demons are not on the same level. Okay, so some demons you may be able to just cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you in Jesus' name. Come out. Boom. They're coming out. You know, you got the power and all that. But then there are other demons that if you're not prayed up and fasted up, you know, for the situation or whatever, then you can't just always expect that that demon is going to come out. Okay? And some things may take longer than others. Let's, let's remember that. So that was a teaching moment as well uh, for the disciples. And, okay. The last scripture that I want to go to is Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 18. And I'm going wrap this up i'll tell you about another scripture but um this is this is the last one i plan on going to here ephesians the sixth chapter verse 18 the bible says praying always with all prayer and the supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance, okay, that's persistency, perseverance, and supplication, okay, that's request and petition, for who? All saints, for all saints, all our brethren, okay, this is how we practice being our brother's keeper this is how we practice being our brother's keeper and watching there unto with all perseverance with persistence and supplication making our requests and our petition for all the saints not just the saints in your church but all the saints everywhere in the world because they're all a part of the body gotta pray for one another all right? And we got to be persistent. Okay? We got we got to be watchful. We we got to keep our eyes out. And when we and, and have our ears open to hear what's going on as far as God's children. Okay? Cuz that's how you know what to pray for a lot of times. Um and of course, Matthew 6 chapter verse 9 to 13, I'm not going to go there, but that is the prayer that Jesus had given the disciples. Uh, when they ask to teach us how to pray, and that's the Our Father prayer. Well, yeah, I call it Our Father's Prayer. Um, he did not give them a prayer uh, that was selfish. He said, pray in this manner, Our Father. So that means you have to include the brethren. We need to include the brethren in our prayer. Don't just be praying for yourself. Include the brethren. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in our presence days in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, not just me. Okay? Us, it's us, 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 us. You hear us and our through the prayer. Okay? And when it gets to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay? Forgive us. 
our debts as we forgive our debt to us. Then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Okay. Amen. Of course, we're going to say in Jesus' name. Amen. Because whatever we do in word or deed, we're supposed to do it all in the name of Jesus. Okay. So make sure you're in your prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because you do want God to be accepting those prayers and you want there to be some power behind that. And there's power in the name of Jesus. Okay. That name has authority. All right. And it means something to God. When you put his name on the end of the situation. All right. At this time, um, I'm not going to go any further with that. I hope you wrote down the scriptures. Okay. Um, the ones that I did not go to. I hope that you wrote those scriptures down. And um, go back over those scriptures. Okay. Go back over those scriptures. Um, go back again. Look at the live. Well, it won't be live anymore. Well, go back and look at the broadcast on Facebook, okay, so that you can just process. Because sometimes while it's being uh, taught, you don't necessarily get it all into your spirit. You don't absorb it all. Um, and so you need to go back. And sometimes you need to go over and over it again so you can hear it, all right, and get a clear understanding, then apply the word. So all of those scriptures are online for you to go back to, all right, and... Uh, get what God has for you. Okay? My brother's keeper. You are my brother's keeper. I am my brother's keeper. All right? And we have to realize that. And it's going to be that way till Jesus come back. Okay? Till Jesus come back. We are our brother's keeper. And if at any time we needed to be our brother's keeper, it is now. Okay? Because let me tell you something. The world is going to get worse. And the devil is going to come after us. More than he's been coming after us. And we need to be our brother's keeper. We need to be on each other's side. And we need to be praying for one another and fasting for one another. Okay? The Bible has already let us know that in the last days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And this is the time. Okay? And we don't want to see any of the body fall away. We don't want to see any of the body fall away. So we have to pray for each other. We have to help each other. We have to encourage each other. And we cannot be selfish. This is not just about you. It is not just about me. It is about the entire body of Christ that has to fight against the wiles of the devil. Okay? And as I say at Solid Rock, we do it better when we do it together. And the thing of the devil is he believes in divide and conquering. But we have to... Make sure that the devil is not able to divide us. Okay? We we have to make sure. Okay? So all this little stuff that comes up, we can't afford to hold on to this stuff and let the devil divide us. Okay? Because as I said, listen, the Bible tells us one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand to flight. Alright? One, a thousand, two, ten thousand. So the more we stick together, the better we can get this work done because Jesus is really on his way back. He is so soon to come. And I don't know how much time we got left, but it don't seem like it's going to be much. And we don't have no time to be playing right now, okay? So the devil is not going to be playing with us. He's not going to be playing with the church. And I'm sure he knows that the time is really closing in. All you, can, all you have to do is look at the signs of the time. Look at what's going on around you. So much. And the enemy is infiltrating the world with more and more of himself. And our job is to infiltrate the world with more and more of the Lord as much as we possibly can. And we can get more done if we're working together than we can if we're working against one another. At this time, I ask you to go to Cash App, go to Give the Five, and go ahead and be that blessing to uh, the ministry. Amen. And God himself will bless you for what you do and for your giving. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. Give. And let me tell you, um, give. Give to your own church. Also, give, okay? Make sure that you are a giver. But don't just give money. Give money, but don't just give money. Give your time, okay? Because a lot of times your church is in need of your time to help build the kingdom. 
One person can't just build it all by itself. You can't expect the pastor to do it all. Okay? That's not even fair. Because you want the pastor to preach and teach and study the word of God and fast and pray. Uh, keep you full of the Lord and run here and run there and do this and do that. Okay? And then they got to do your stuff, do their stuff, and do church stuff. And how how one person supposed to do all of that? No. We need help. We need help. And we got to understand that when Moses was told what to do by the Lord, when God told Moses what he needed to do and how to build that tabernacle, God let him know that he had put his own spirit, all right, in Basilio, I hope I'm saying it correctly, all right, in wisdom, knowledge, Understanding and wisdom, understanding and knowledge. He had given him skill, okay? Understanding of how to strategically build, do all the different things that God wanted done as far as that tabernacle was concerned. And he also had another man that he was going to use along with him. But he also enabled um, Bezalio, um to be able to teach what God had put in him, Okay? So that means he needed to use someone. And then the someone that he was going to use was going to also teach others to be able to do what needed to be done so that they could build that tabernacle. All right? And then the other people's duty was to give, to give to that ministry for the help them to build. Okay? So we all have a part. You all have a part. You may not have that, that part, but you have a part. And the people gave liberally, okay? They gave of the stuff that God had blessed them with. They gave it. And they gave so much that they gave too much. And I'm sure, you know, most of us would, would love to be able to say, oh, my goodness, that I gave too much. All right, y'all don't, don't have to give no more, okay? Give. Make sure you're a giver. Don't just want to be a receiver. Make sure you're a giver because if you're a giver, you're automatically going to receive. The Bible said, you know, if you give, he said that you're going to receive and men is going to give into your bosom. Uh, they're going to give it to you liberally, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Okay. But you cannot expect to reap what you have not sown. So you got to sow those seeds. You got to sow, sow, sow. All right. And be that blessing to the kingdom of God. And God is in turn going to be a blessing unto you. So give what God has instructed you to give and give of yourself as well so that God can use you in the kingdom. Be inspired tonight to be the best brother's keeper you can possibly be. Remember, we love you, but God loves you best. Be blessed.